Welcome back to the second video of our series Cost Management How to Build Your Financial Model. Our previous episode was an introduction to the series, so don't forget to watch it. As mentioned in our previous episode, that we will try to divide our financial model into submodels. So today we will show how to build one of these submodels, which is the CPU model or the cost per unit model. But what is the cost per unit model or CPU? The main purpose of the CPU model is to show the impact of each cost component on the final cost per production unit and then to calculate the EBIT or earnings before interest and tax. Regarding the model structure, the CPU model is combining different cost categories such as variable costs, manufacturing overhead, and other fixed costs. This classification can support in calculating your CS ratio or contribution to sales. So, as you see the CPU model aims to analyze the impact of the main cost components the fixed costs versus variable costs. The other cost categories that you need to be aware of are the direct and indirect costs. These concepts and categories will be explained in more detail but in separate videos. Now, let's start showing how to build your financial model in practice and how to use it in the planning and forecasting process. As it's shown in the current sheet, the CPU based on comparing three types of data structures. Actual data of previous periods, last five years for example. Current rolling forecast data. The concepts and main assumptions for the rolling forecast will be explained in more detail in separate video. Budget or estimated data for the upcoming years, 5 years for example. As shown, this comparison process results in variances that should be analyzed. And don't forget that the good data presentation and visualization will support in making your financial analysis readable, easy to follow, and will provide great data for the decision-making process. But how to apply a good data presentation and visualization in your model? You can do that for example, by adding a ready-made shape in your Excel such as arrows, circles, and squares. Especially if it could be interactive shapes as the one we are use on this model. As you see, the data will be updated on the shapes once you select a date from the drop list. I will try to show you how to add similar interactive shapes, also how to apply special format effects, but all will be in separate video. Also, we will use the validation list option to summarize our data on one sheet as possible. Without the need to display it on many sheets. Every time you choose a year from the list, the data will be automatically updated. The automatic update of the data is based on compound equation, formula, for example IFS function and ZLOOKUP or VLOOKUP function. Don't worry, I will try to show you all these formulas and these Excel functions can work. Just follow this series episodes. Now let's look at the rest of the sheets data. The actual Moreover, and budget. The data of columns C and D is related to the actual data of previous periods. You can find it on the next page, actual. The same for the rollover data. The data of column G and H is related to the budget for the upcoming five years. Of course, this data will depend on the method you adopt in preparing your budget. The budget approaches will be discussed in another episode. Now, just to make it simple and well understood, I have chosen the top-down approach of preparing the budget. But now, you may ask, what is the best budget approach? Is it top-down, the bottom-up, the zero budget, or any other approach? The best fit-right model ultimately depends on the nature of the business the resources availability, and the adopted management style. 
Also, for further details about the top-down approach and the bottom-up, I recommend that you read the following article, which was published on JDoc's blog. It's about top-down and bottom-up planning. As you see, the article contents are What is top-down and bottom-up planning? Top-down versus bottom-up? Which model is the best fit for my company? Advantages and disadvantages of both models. And so on. Also, I recommend that you read the following article, which was published by Paul, the founder of the FP and a guy. Paul on slide 5 mentioned five common methods for budgeting and forecasting. The zero-based budget. Incremental budgeting. Activity-based budgeting. Driver-based budgeting. Value proposition budgeting. In the next episodes we'll try to show you how to prepare your budget based on these methods. Also, how to link this budget to the rolling forecast. And of course, there should be a sheet for assumptions used in the model. For example, GDP, inflation, and so on. I will try to discuss this sheet in detail on the next episodes. But now, it's highly recommended to read this article by James Rimmer. Combating the dangers of inflation. James Rimmer is one of the principal consultants in the expense reduction analysts. The ERA or expense reduction analysts is one of the world's leading consultancy organizations specializing in cost optimization and supplier relation management. In his article James shared six dangers of inflation and how you can act or take action within your business to combat these. The six dangers of inflation on your business are classified as follow. 1. Forecasting and budgeting. 2. Running out of cash. 3. Cost control. 4. Retaining talent. 5. Wage inflation. 6. Putting up prices. Now, what about the variances? Do we need to analyze it? And how? Sure, you need to analyze your variance. But take care. The analysis does not mean displaying or presenting a set of numbers only. But you must have the skills of interpreting those numbers and recommending solutions. Applying appropriate variance analysis techniques are essential for your financial model. There are a lot of analysis techniques. One of the common examples of these techniques are as mentioned by Boucher Nicholas in his new announced course. It's highly recommended. I will leave a direct link of this post in the comments as below. In his digital course, Boucher Nicholas teaching 14 common analysis techniques. The PVM or price volume mix. The standard cost. The overhead analysis. Sensitivity analysis. Profitability analysis. Pareto analysis. Horizontal analysis, vertical analysis, margin analysis, variance analysis, headcount analysis, get insights from raw data, and back of the envelope analysis. Now let's have a look at the actual cheat and how can we link the actual data to the data on other sheets. As we said, your actual data could be based on the last four years and your current year. For the current year you can choose to be the year-to-date actual data. But it will not be suitable for the comparisons. Or you can choose the rollover data. I prefer this method for on the comparisons process. Each year of the actual data is classified into two columns. Actual amount as a total in column D and cost per unit as shown in column E. In row number 5, we'll find the sales quantity for each year. We use it in calculating the cost per unit. 
Lock at the formula bar in regarding to column E. But you may ask, why do we divide the cost amount, for example, the manufacturing overhead and the variable cost, by the quantity of sales and not by the quantity of production? Yes, it's a valid question. Will be discussed in next episode. Now, let's have a look at the rollover sheet. In the rollover sheet, I've highlighted the first four columns from D to G. These four columns represent the actual data of first four months. The next eight columns from H to O represent the rollover or rolling forecasts of the next eight months. In row number five, we'll find the moving price of monthly sales. It is the result of dividing monthly sales amount by sales quantity. You will find the monthly sales quantity in row 6. Don't worry I will show how to use these interacting shapes that I used in row 5 and 6. Each month you should updating your sheet with the actual data. So, you can update your rolling forecasts, and to take account of rolling changes. But now... Why should ruling forecast be used instead of just relying on the traditional budget approach? Let's have a look at this important article by Andres. Andres is the chief operating officer of BPI, the Business Partnering Institute. In his article, Andres mentioned that one of the traditional budget's problems is Budgets still need to be flexed through the year for effective performance management. Rolling forecasts evolved to try and solve this problem. The intention was to respond rapidly to a changing environment, to take opportunities as they arose and build them into the plan. Processes reliant upon traditional budget cycles must also be updated to take account of rolling changes. Now it's time for an interactive discussion and active recommendations to improve your model as well as your current model in the video. In the comments, I will leave a link of a LinkedIn post. In this post, I will try to open an interactive discussion about our topic today. The post will be on my LinkedIn profile. Waiting your comments and participate in the discussion. Also, to read the insights and advice by experts in the industry, as well as professional experts in the financial modeling and financial analysis. In the next episode, we will discuss and show how to build your budget, and we will start with one of the most important budget models, which is the top-down approach. See you. Goodbye.